MPAs is. Yeah, MPAs are a really important tool for um, managing biodiversity, and that's there are a few reasons for that. One, it just well, well, first, it's important to understand the difference between a marine protected area and a true marine reserve. And marine protected areas are often multiple use, so some places you can fish and some places you can't. Some places recreational fishers can go, and other places even commercial fishers can go. Um, but in a true marine reserve, that offer, offers biodiversity double protection. So for example, in the case of the giant sea bass, it's a protected species here in California. We're not allowed to take it. But we are allowed to catch it by accident and recreationally fishing, and they happen to be very susceptible to death by recreation fishing, even if we, even if we release them. So a marine reserve offers them that double protection of not being able to be caught even by accident, so they don't have to ever go through that trauma. So it's important to remember that climate change and ocean acidification and these global things really have, have impacts on the whole ocean. And, and in some cases, it's hard to tell whether or not some parts of the ocean are more or less affected. However, we do have evidence from different marine reserves around the world that um, implies that we, when we have less fishing and better water, water quality, the impacts of climate change and ocean acidification seem to be mitigated, in some cases significantly. So, for example, on we don't have coral reefs here, but coral reefs are one area that we protect in MPAs all around the world. And there seems to be clear evidence that, MP, that coral reefs protected inside reserves and protected from poor water quality seem to be somewhat resilient to climate change and ocean acidification. So that's really good news, and that just gives us an idea of how those local impacts interact with the global impacts.